there's a widespread liking for exciting tournament storylines in anime. In these arcs, some of the most memorable battles, character growth, and standout moments occur as characters face off in controlled combat situations, often leading to unexpected matchups. Two well-known anime series, Dragon Ball and Naruto, are famous for their impressive tournament arcs, like the Budokai tournaments and Chunin exams, which have had a significant impact on their franchises and anime as a whole. Let's explore a hypothetical scenario. What if Goku's first tournament wasn't the 21st Budokai, but the Chunin exams from early Naruto? Could he navigate all three stages of the exams? Is it possible for him to win? Or would skilled young ninja opponents stop him? This is what we are going to discuss in today's video. But before we do that, make sure to hit the like and subscribe buttons to join our wonderful YouTube family. So let's get started. We'll go through each phase of the Chunin exams starting with a written test, followed by the Forest of Death challenge and ending with the actual tournament. We'll discuss character abilities and practical factors later, but for now, let's assess how Goku would do in the written exam. If the Chunin exam's written part only required correct answers to questions, Goku might struggle. The exam covers subjects like math and advanced writing skills, areas where even Goku from Dragon Ball Super might face difficulties. In the original series, Goku himself is unsure about his age. This overly complex exam has a lot of rules. Initially, each participant starts with a perfect score of 10 points. There are 10 questions, each worth 1 point, with deductions for wrong answers. The grading system involves penalties. Another important aspect is that the exam is a team effort. The main focus is on how well a team of 3 ninjas retains their initial 30 points. Cheating or helping cheaters results in a 2-point penalty. If a participant has no points left by the end of the exam due to cheating or not answering accurately, they fail automatically. If one person in a team fails, the whole team fails. Luckily, passing the stage doesn't necessarily mean answering all questions correctly, so many rules don't really matter. You just need to avoid giving up when faced with the proctor's final challenge. Ultimately, the exam tests determination and information gathering skills, with determination being the only requirement to pass. In fact, Goku's performance in the exam might be similar to Naruto's, either not answering or answering incorrectly, but not giving up leading to a pass. Now, let's look at this specific exam. Goku's approach might not be suited for clever strategies or using unique abilities, making cheating unlikely. For the sake of discussion, let's assume Goku is either an exception without teammates or has average teammates who don't hinder him. Blaming Goku's failure on bad teammates seem weak, as even silent individuals in the room manage to pass. At worst, Goku is likely to pass the basic part, making this phase relatively unimportant. Let's move on to the Forest of Death. Assessing how Goku would do in the Forest of Death is more uncertain. The Forest of Death, the second phase of the Chunin exams, puts all remaining teams in a dangerous forest where survival for five days is the goal. Teams also need to get two scrolls from other teams, which can be done through tricks, theft, or direct battles. This phase tests survival skills and resourcefulness. Goku excels in one of these aspects but struggles with the other. Goku's early actions in Dragon Ball show self-sufficiency in nature, catching large fish and dealing with wild dinosaurs. Similarly, competence is seen during his training with Roshi, where he navigates a dinosaur-filled forest to find a specific stone. However, Goku's notable weakness in this early series becomes evident. Instances like Goku being outsmarted by Krillin highlight his vulnerability to manipulation. Goku's gullible nature is clear during the exams, high-level tricks and manipulation are used, surpassing Krillin's tactics. Given the complexity of these tricks, it's unlikely Goku would detect and counter them effectively. It's probable that manipulation tactics used by some ninja during the Forest of Death would confuse Goku. Notably, Genjutsu wouldn't work on Goku due to his lack of chakra networks. Goku's survival in this phase is uncertain. While immune to Genjutsu, getting scrolls might be a challenge he can't overcome. Now, let's focus on Goku's performance during the most important phase, the actual tournament. Instead of discussing every possible fight Goku could have, let's specifically evaluate how he'd fare against the top-tier finalists of the Chunin exams, Lee, Neji, Naruto, Sasuke, and Gaara. We'll start by looking at Goku and then delve into his opponent's strengths. It's important to note that Goku's moon-level power due to Roshi's moon destruction is a misconception. While Goku and Roshi are equals in their base forms, Roshi's moon-destroying feat was in his full power and max power states. Full Power Roshi uses all his energy in one attack, while Max Power Roshi's Kamehameha surpasses his base strength and can destroy the moon. Goku's battle with Roshi doesn't mean he has moon-level power. As base Goku and Roshi are similar, it's not the same Roshi who destroyed the moon. Full Power Roshi's mountain-shattering attack is different from his moon-destroying feat. 
The attack that destroyed the moon is Max Power, where Roshi uses his muscles to enhance the Kamehameha's power. Max Power Roshi's attack might surpass Kid Goku's Great Ape transformation. This doesn't mean Roshi can fight Raditz-level opponents. The idea is that Roshi can briefly match higher power levels. Goku's actual strength is up for interpretation. With a power level of 10, Goku shows building level power easily. A power level of 5, like Farmer with a shotgun, shows a significant gap even with a small difference. Early Dragon Ball power levels increase exponentially, later they become more linear. A times 2 power level means twice the speed and strength. Around the start of Dragon Ball Z, this explains the transformation of characters like Roshi. Considering power levels, Goku's power increases almost 14 times after Roshi's training, reaching 139. Using a linear interpretation, Goku's minimum power level at this point is city block level strength. The minimum estimate is a base point, lacking more scaling feats. Goku's maximum power falls short of moon level. Speed analysis is complex as early Dragon Ball lacks speed benchmarks. Goku's speed feat involves dodging a laser from full metal jacket. This happens after his training on Korin's tower, putting his power level around 180. Speed increases exponentially and Goku's exact speed during the Chunin exams is unclear. Scaling in the Chunin exams is complicated due to significant growth. Sasuke goes from struggling against base Lee to outmatch 5th Gate Lee in base form. Naruto's use of Kurama's chakra in the Forest of Death, where he subdues one of Orochimaru's snakes, shows multi-city block level power. Naruto during this phase is on par or weaker than transform Naruto against Neji and Gaara. This tier includes high hypersonic speed, with characters like Sasuke possibly achieving lightning speed. Neji's reaction to Kidomaru's arrow, a feat near lightning speed, matches massively hypersonic speed. The challenger speed is much higher than Goku's early feats. High hypersonic and lightning speed feats are clear. Goku's performance in the 21st Budokai during the Chunin exams depends on his speed and strength. The outcome depends on how you interpret individual power. If Goku's strength is close to his power level of 180, he might have enough speed and strength to beat his tournament opponents. It's open for discussion. The challenger's swiftness is undoubtedly at a level significantly beyond Goku's early capabilities. High hypersonic and lightning speed feats are indicative of their advanced skills. When evaluating Goku's potential performance in the Chunin exams, his successful pivots on how his strength and speed stack up. Yet, a considerable portion of this estimation hinges on the interpretation of individual power levels. Should Goku's strength prove to be markedly distinct from his power level of 180, he may struggle against formidable opponents like Naruto, Neji, Gara, and Sasuke. However, assuming the power gap of 41 isn't insurmountable, Goku could potentially possess the requisite speed and strength to outmatch all his tournament adversaries. It's worth emphasizing that the final judgment remains open for debate. With this comprehensive analysis, the question of whether Goku would triumph in the Chinin exams comes down to a delicate balancing act between his strength and the superior swiftness demonstrated by his potential competitors. The assessment underscores that Goku's early feats and power levels, while impressive, might not be enough to guarantee victory in this challenging arena. The scenarios presented here serve as an exploration into the hypothetical, encouraging fans of both Dragon Ball and Naruto to engage in thoughtful discussions and debates regarding their favorite characters. So whether Goku emerges victorious or faces formidable challenges in the Chunin exams, the journey of speculation and contemplation ultimately enrich our connection to the anime world, reminding us of the boundless joy that comes from immersing ourselves in the stories we love. As we delve deeper into the hypothetical scenario of Goku participating in the Chunin exams, it's crucial to consider his adaptability and learning curve. While Goku's early feats might suggest a power level that could fall short against the likes of Naruto, Neji, Gara, and Sasuke, it's essential not to underestimate his potential for growth. The world of Dragon Ball is characterized by characters who consistently push their limits, achieving unprecedented power through determination and relentless training. One could argue that Goku's drive and innate fighting instincts could lead to rapid improvement throughout the course of the Chunin exams. Just as he went from struggling against basic martial artists to eventually becoming one of the most powerful beings in the universe, Goku's participation in the Chunin exams could serve as a catalyst for his growth. His encounters with formidable opponents could inspire him to tap into latent abilities or develop new techniques, bridging the power gap between him and the other contestants. Moreover, let's consider Goku's unique key-based abilities. 
Ki, the life force energy that fuels his strength, grants him a range of techniques and transformations that have proven pivotal in his battles. While the Naruto characters possess their own distinct set of skills, Goku's key control might grant him an advantage that transcends mere physical strength. Imagine a scenario where Goku utilizes his energy sensing to anticipate his opponent's movements, counteracting their advanced speed with precision strikes. Furthermore, his ability to channel Ki into powerful attacks, like the Kamehameha wave, could catch his adversaries off guard, potentially turning the tide of a battle. It's also worth pondering the psychological aspects of Goku's presence in the Chunin exams. His infectious optimism and determination have consistently inspired those around him, fostering a sense of camaraderie and unity. In a world where rivalry and personal growth play a pivotal role, Goku's influence could lead to unexpected alliances or unforeseen strategies. His genuine desire to test his limits and respect for opponents might earn him the respect of fellow participants, altering the dynamics of the competition. Do you think Goku would succeed in the Chunin exams based on this analysis? If not, how far would he get? Share your thoughts in the comments and subscribe for more content.